Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're finally taking a look and a tour of the studio here. This is the first video of 2018, and I figure it would make sense to actually do a tour that I've been promising all of last year and never got to. There are a couple things I wanna talk about super quick before we jump in, and you should keep in mind. Number one, this place has changed so much. This is my third or fourth space when it comes to actually operating a studio. And it's taken me working full time seven years to get to this point. So don't think that I just went out and purchased all this or that all of this was just sent to me out of nowhere. This place has evolved quite a bit, um, as my wife could tell you. The next thing to keep in mind is that this is a basement. The furnace is running right now, you probably hear it. There's a washer machine and a dryer in the next room over there. So I'm not in some special fancy place, this is just a basement of a house. Uh, just kind of goes to show that you can really turn any space into a studio. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to grab my GH5 here, and we'll be using this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit record. I'm gonna turn on the house lights using this remote here, and we're gonna kick this baby off. So I'm gonna walk to the other end of the room. That's the camera that I use to film with. Pretty much if you see my face, you see this camera, or it's filmed through this camera. This is the Panasonic G85. This will be replaced shortly with my GH5, which I'm filming with right now but i needed the gh5 to show people stuff so that's what's up there if we turn around here you'll notice we have a pretty long room i think we're talking maybe 20 feet 25 feet by i don't know 13 ish so i'm lucky to have a pretty long studio but at the same time these ceilings are stupid super low this wide angle is going to make this place feel huge but in reality like that's my head so we're pretty close to to the ceiling um, so yeah let's go ahead and talk about the lighting setup we're gonna go over the key first and right now I'm using bounce but this is something new that I'm really excited about the setup is new the gear is old I have a 4x4 frame here that is attached to the ceiling and what I love about this is it is both diffusion and bounce so there's actually two different layers um, that are uh, attached to this frame. So it's, it's a pretty simple, you know, tubular frame with two different materials stretched across it. The one you're looking at right now is a white sheet. It's non-transparent. So this 150 watt is bouncing off of that, giving me a key light. Um, the other layer, which is underneath this white one, is diffusion. So if I'm testing a light, I can put it up here, bounce it, and we can see what that looks like. Or I can take this sheet off and put a light where you see this uh, 120T and do a typical diffusion setup. So that's the key light setup. A one chip light bouncing off of a white surface, a four x four and hitting me. For those who care and you probably don't, this is a tiny shower stool because I'm tall and we're in a tiny studio and I have a Tempur-Pedic old pillow on it to keep my tush nice and uh, in shape. Um, so that's the key. Let's move back here. The rest of the lighting is uh, one of them's right here, the 120D. This is giving me a kicker light. A little overkill, but this is I use it because it has a remote and uh, I can do some of the things with that. The next light is one that I'm about to review or review shortly, and that is the Intellitech Pocket Cannon. And this thing is super dope, really bright, great Fresnel lens and it comes with all these awesome attachments like this um, snoot you see here. What I love about that is I'll use that to specifically target um, a particular product and give it a nice kind of hair or rim light of its own. So kicker light and then kind of a rim or hair light for products where I sit. The background light is another light that I'll be reviewing shortly and this is a Falcon Eyes RGB light. So you'll notice here I can actually change the color temperature and it has RGB capability. So we'll be looking at that in the future. And that brings us to the vinyl backdrops. I used to use paper, paper wrinkles like crazy, and Savage was awesome enough to send me um, some of their vinyl. So we've got black, gray, and white. 
Uh, we'll keep talking about these because they're really awesome and you can see the light doesn't wrinkle, it just kind of beautifully absorbs the light if you will. So that is the paper backdrop and that's kind of the lighting situation. Um, the last thing I'll mention is this 5-in-1 reflector and I can use that for a fill and that's how I primarily use it. It's also set up so that I can take the whole thing up and send it over and kind of do an overhead bounce setup which is really handy for shooting b-roll let's quickly talk about the monitoring situation if i walk back around to uh, kind of where you guys normally see me off to the side i have this cart and this thing has been changing quite a bit Ugh, i'll take a seat and we have several things going on here the first thing you'll notice is um, my face on here. So from the camera, we're sending an HDMI cable, uh, and converting it to SDI, and into this Apollo recorder. With this setup, I can record two 4K cameras simultaneously, or four HD signals. And the reason this whole thing exists is not only to make videos easier to shoot, but also um, for the guides that I film. That's a lot of cameras, that's a lot of SD cards, that's a lot of batteries dying without me knowing. So uh, a multi-recorder like this is critical to make sure I'm not wasting hours and hours and hours. So from Apollo, we're sending the signal to this. This is a 4K 12-inch um, monitor that I'll be reviewing shortly. It is the Lilliput A12. And this thing's awesome. I actually realized I had a dead pixel because of this monitor. It's really, really, really awesome. So lots of cool features. You can send four cameras to it at the same time. And then we have my trusty small HD DP7 Pro doing things like vector scope, waveform, um, making sure my exposure is good to go and I don't have to second guess myself. So the whole thing is mounted on a cheap IKEA cart. I'll back up a little bit here so you can see what's going on there. Um, power and cables are all routed through that. And I've got some other things here that I frequently grab, like a color chart. We got some remotes here for controlling lights. Uh, and this thing has been invaluable for making videos quickly. And now let's talk about audio. So really for almost everything, I'm using this Aperture Deity shotgun microphone. I've got it mounted to a Rode monitor arm and on a C stand that rolls around. So this whole thing um, can move with me or I can just do stuff like this. Just grab it and move it out of the way if I'm filming something else here. I did a video on this particular stand style using a light, but you can obviously also put a microphone on it. From the microphone, I am running an HDMI or uh, XLR cable rather down to this Mix Pre 3 and all sound is handled on this sucker. It is incredible. Can do up to four microphones and tons of other stuff. So excellent recorder really really good preamps and really that's it for audio tech one of the things that made this space uh really sound good in my opinion is the acoustic treatment so on the ceiling you'll notice we've got a lot of these uh acoustic tiles they're two inches thick and uh, they're actually glued onto just really boring half inch um you know foam board and uh, then those are chained to the ceiling so they're really lightweight you know, you could build one of these in an afternoon and I've got those mounted to the ceiling and that makes a huge difference for sound um, as hopefully you guys hear in the videos. So we're reoriented in kind of the angle that you guys watch me from and on this entire wall back here, you'll notice it's really dark and that is due to these uh, Producers Choice sound blankets running the entire length of this wall by the main video area. This stuff is incredible and it makes such a big difference for sound. I would highly recommend you check them out. If you just wanna sound, you know, treat a room very easily, you can just hang them up like I have and it makes a huge difference uh, to echoey rooms. And just so I can show you the difference in sound quality, I am in a different part of the same room. Check one, two, three, and I'm going to walk underneath all that sound treated stuff and uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear a difference as I kick a light stand. So right where I sit and right where the microphone is, it should sound um, significantly better than back out here where there is no treatment at all. And yeah, there you go for sound. And if we start turning to the left, um, you'll notice this table right here. 
you guys are very familiar with this background. I use this table for a lot of B-roll. I'll put different surfaces down, a um, lot of opening boxes and little shots of things, lots of B-roll. And this is the lighting setup I use for that. It is a Falcon Eyes 18T with a softbox on it. And that is mounted to one of those uh, road arm dealios that I've talked about in the past. I'll go ahead and turn it on. I need to put that in a better position. And let's change our exposure a little bit, shall we? Um, yeah, this is the setup. And what I love about it is I can just grab the light change the position just like that, raise it back up, do all kinds of different things. And this is usually roughly where I have it positioned, kind of backlighting um, various products. And right about here is where I have the camera mounted with a longer lens. To mount the camera, I have this thing. You'll see these all over the studio. These are Matthew's baby plates. You can screw them to the ceiling, walls, and um, here's where I have the camera mounted. I can also mount other lights if I need to. If I back up a little bit, we'll start talking about storage. Um, here's my GH4. I use that as a second or third camera. And then behind it, we've got a ton of soft boxes, which I love. And those are all mounted to um, a big uh, giant you know, shelf with various long storage stuff. So long-term storage, don't really play with that. Same with this behemoth over here behind all this modifier stuff. Lots of long-term storage. And uh, so I just kind of cover that up and use uh, that wall, if you will, for big diffusion, big bounce boards and whatnot. Continuing to rotate around, we have the light stand wall. This is where I store all of my light stands. Um, as well as some extra uh, rigging grip equipment, tripods, things like that. They're the, just these J hooks. So it looks kind of like a J. And I bought those at Lowe's, really, really solid. And that holds a whole bunch of junk, as well as uh, my cart from back in the day when I was hauling all this stuff everywhere. To the left of that, we have the charging station, which is simply composed of power strips and tons and tons of chargers. Don't freak out. I turn this off when I'm not here. It's only on when I'm in the studio charging stuff. And to the left of that, we have the door out of the studio and another area where I store a bunch of stuff. Got some clamps here. Sometimes I'll have a stand here. If I move over here and back up, you will notice we've got a lot going on here. So this is where I store um, the majority of the lights that I use or am testing. We've got some modifiers here little tiny LED panels up top. And uh, then as we work our way down, we've got larger chip um, lights, like the Aperture COB stuff, a uh, couple of old Alzos, and then a ton of like LED panels, traditional style stuff. Uh, really awesome light system that we'll be talking about in a future video. Um, we've got a bunch of baby Fresnels here, more power supplies and things little baby stands. I love these for background lights because they're tiny. And so I have a bunch of those at the ready. There's the Aperture Tri-8, which I have a very specific use for involving thumbnails. We'll talk about that in a future video. Then a bunch of junk I need to organize and a closet that seriously and desperately needs to be addressed. It's a mess in there and eventually it'll turn into shelves like this. And last but not least in this room, um, this wall back here, there's where I sit facing you guys. Uh, this wall just holds a bunch of random uh, lights or light stands that I sometimes pull out. Or if I'm needing to shoot a video, but I'm in the middle of reviewing something, I'll just tuck it all back there. And the very last thing I'll mention that I forgot to talk about in lighting is the sheet of duvetine, which is keeping this bounce key light source. It blocks it right here and keeps it from hitting the background. That way I have everything completely controlled with just the background light. So you can see if I turn off um, the house lights, everything is individually controlled. So that is the main shooting space. This is where a lot of the magic happens and yeah, lots goes on in here. We're now going to move into kind of no man's land. So I just walked through this door coming into this room 
and we're going to back it up here. Here's another one of those producer choice sound blankets that I can kind of slide over and block off the main studio for sound. Here's a board that I've left here for six months and need to put up. Here's a slider. Thank you for 100,000, you guys are beasts. And now we're gonna back up here and we're gonna change our color temperature. This is kind of a weird space. It's underneath some stairs. Um, it's kind of small. This lens again makes it huge, but there's not a lot of room here. So what I have set up here is just a bunch of gear storage. Starting on the left, we have these um, containers or drawer systems which I absolutely love. They're about 60 bucks from Ikea. They have wheels on the bottoms, but I take the wheels off of the top layer and now I can have kind of a double decker setup. And I just have found that these drawers are like the perfect size for holding stuff. They're just the right height. Um, lens caps, lens adapters, um, cables and these big ones here, which is awesome. So really, really dig them, and uh, they're not too expensive, so just over time I've kept purchasing them. I probably ought to buy one here so I don't keep stuffing junk in there. And uh, that holds a lot of different stuff. On the right side, we have another storage unit. This one I built a long time ago, and that houses my server. Let me go over here and brighten things up a little bit. So we've got my server, which is just eight, um, huge hard drives in the case server backup eight more huge hard drives both are rated and then we got the server computer and then we've got a bunch of bins um, this is also kind of whatever no man's land and then we've got these little boxes which this is stuff i access constantly so we got a ton of nano clamps over here we got little spigots and things here we got ball heads over here and then we have Arca Swiss plates right there. That's kind of the stuff that I'm constantly grabbing for a video. And then above that, we have a shelf, which is primarily composed of, usually I have this with a bunch of cameras. Right now they're all in the studio or I have some loaned out at the moment. We also have uh, just random stuff. This is where I keep the batteries. And you can see I'm trying to convert everything over to Sony MPF uh, style batteries. So I've got quite a few there little tester that I made so I can quickly check them. And then we have a bunch of cameras that I'm not gonna show too in depth because those are in an upcoming video, but a lot of budget cameras. And then we have um, my lens problem. So a bunch of old vintage lenses, some new, there's a couple Sony's and Panasonic's and more old stuff here, a couple of anamorphic, my babies, my Nikon zooms, and then some more primes over there. Um, on the very top, we have more bins. You're going to see a lot more bins in a second, but this hold all kinds of stuff. I love these shoebox bins. They um, hold quite a bit and yeah, like them a lot. And now we're going to head into the office. There's a couple things going on here. First, we have um, my desk that we've talked about in previous videos. There's You can check that out. Um, another little desk here in the corner that isn't being used, but when I have an assistant in, that's where she sits, he sits, and uh, that might be being used a little more in the future. Don't know, but at some point we're going to have to reconfigure things so it's not just one super monster desk here in the center. On the left side we have all the boring stuff, some files, a computer, hard drives, printer, scanner, which changed my life, uh, Evernote awesome poster that I recently got. This place is also treated for sound, um, not necessarily video recording or audio recording, but primarily playback and editing. And then behind it, um, we have the, I don't even know what to call it, behemoth, psychopathic, <laughs> out of control um, tool wall. Now there's a purpose for everything on this and I use everything you see here all the time. There's a couple little proppy things in there. Um, but essentially it's comprised of, I would say, what, four sections. We've got a desk that I built, just a huge workbench. Um, we have these giant shelves on either side, which I also built, which are the just the right size for uh, those shoe boxes that I was talking about. Um, those are on the side. Down below we have these old school um, 3x5 card 
giant steel drawer units that perfectly fit there. And then the tool wall, which has a bunch of tools, uh, little things that I'm constantly grabbing. This bench um, I use for, you know, bringing gear in, um, taking it apart, logging it, um, building various rigs or whatever, uh, and just whatever I'm kind of working on at the moment, PCM building. Um, yeah, and then it makes for a nice background when I do the live streams or use this, which I'm planning to do more as a background for my videos. You guys saw in my uh, kind of 2017 wrap up video, we use this as a background. You'll also notice we've got some lights set up here, which is also new. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on another set of lights here. Um, there's a bar I ran all the way across the studio here, and I've mounted a bunch of lights. They all have a purpose and I'll walk through them real quick. First, we have that giant LED mat that I talked about recently from Falcon Eyes. That is lighting kind of the um, main section of the background, as you can see there. And then we have three of these Aperture Mini 20Ds. Uh, this one's actually the Mini 20C, and that gives me a hair or rim or kicker light at my desk when I'm doing the live stream. And then we have three over here. One of them, or two of them rather, go into this corner. Um, if I turn off this light back here again, you'll see kind of a streak of light. So if I film a video kind of like at this angle, I get some nice lighting back there. The other one hits the corner. And then the other one is also kind of hitting this area up here. And then I've got another one, um, which is right here. So that um, if I'm facing this guy or this camera right here um, from this kind of an angle, I have kind of a hair light or kicker and that's what you saw in my 2017 video just giving me a little bit of interest on that side of my face so I don't disappear into the background for shooting in here which I plan to do more often I have a tripod mounted there and we have this light tucked in the corner which I'll pull out and turn on and this is one of those um, came TV lights and I've got a cheap softbox with a grid on it really like the quality of this setup and i'll talk about it in the future and there's the light itself powered off of a v mount so i can just roll it around um, stand with cheap little wheels on the ends so i can just take this whole thing tuck it away when i'm done turn it off and it's kind of out of the way okay that's gonna do it for this tour i hope you enjoyed it um, if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer those in the comments. Or if you saw something you'd like to see explained in more detail, maybe we'll do a video on it. That's the studio. It's going to keep changing. It always changes. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see this stuff regularly, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.